Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will explain differential pulse code modulation with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, first of all, I'll explain difference in between PCM and differential PCM. After that, I'll discuss about basics of differential PCM. After that, I'll explain DPCM encoder and DPCM decoder. And at last, I'll explain advantages, disadvantages and applications of differential PCM. So let us start this video with first agenda. That is difference between PCM and DPCM. First of all, you need to understand what is PCM. See, PCM is pulse code modulation. So in PCM, first of all, we perform sampling process. After sampling process, we do quantization. And based on quantization, we will be doing encoding of each and every sample. While in case of differential PCM, first of all, we do sampling. After sampling, we take difference in between two consecutive samples. And that difference that we will be encoding over here in DPCM. So in pulse code modulation, what we do is we encode absolute sample values and in DPCM, we encode difference between consecutive samples. Let me explain this graphically. See here, we have one message signal that is drawn over here by this dashed line. First of all, we perform sampling process. So in sampling process, with respect to sampling frequency, we take samples. You can observe here we have samples, amplitude of samples, that is as per original signal and after sampling we perform quantization and based on quantization in PCM we perform encoding of each and every samples right while in differential PCM first of all we perform sampling so you can observe as per sampling frequency with the spacing of TS duration we have samples right but in DPCM, what we do is we encode difference between consecutive samples. So here you can observe we have first sample and second sample difference in between that. That is what we will be encoding over here in DPCM. So what are the advantages over here with DPCM? See, if you talk about difference in between two consecutive samples, then that is having lower range. If you have lower range, then you will be reducing that number of bits per encode. Like if you have single sample, so that will be having full swing range. So for that, you need more number of bits to encode it. But if you take difference in between two consecutive samples, then that difference will be lower than full swing. So here we will be improving bit rate of sampling, right? So in pulse code modulation, we will be encoding absolute sample values while in differential PCM, we will be encoding difference in between two consecutive samples by which we can improve bit rate of encoding, right? Now, let me explain basics of differential PCM. See, when input analog signal is sampled at higher rate than Nyquist rate, then consecutive samples become highly correlated. For example, here we have one input signal and sampling rate that is FS and as per sampling rate, let us consider right now we have samples as per TS duration. If you increase sampling rate, then what will happen? Then here more number of samples will be there. By animations I am showing you, you can observe here now we have more samples. If you have more samples, then difference in between samples that will reduce, right? So when input analog signal is sampled at a higher rate than Nyquist rate, at that time, successive samples become highly correlated. And there will be little difference in amplitude between two successive samples. If you have little difference in between two successive samples, then but obviously you need lower number of bits to encode smaller amplitude, right? If you encode wider amplitude, then you need more number of bits. But if you encode 
smaller amplitude which is a difference in between two consecutive samples then you need less number of bits right when all these samples are quantized and encoded directly the transmitted signal contains large amount of redundant information for example if you have two samples right and magnitude wise sample is having higher magnitude but difference in between two samples that is having very less magnitude then there is higher amount of redundancy right and to reduce that redundancy and to achieve higher compression dpcm transmits only the difference between successive samples instead of absolute value of samples right and this approach reduces the bit rate while maintaining acceptable signal quality now i'll explain you dpcm encoder by which you will be having more clarity like how exactly we perform that encoding as per difference in between two consecutive samples see there is only one difference in between pcm encoder and dpcm encoder in pcm encoder what we do is we give analog input to sampler after that sample signal is given to quantizer and after that quantize signal that we give it to encoder and then we have pcm output but in dpcm encoder we have additional lock that is prediction filter so here in dpcm what we do is we predict consecutive sample that is x cap of nts and here we take a difference in between current sample and predicted sample that is our error signal and that error signal is quantized over here and after quantization eq of nts that is given to encoder and then we have digital dpcm output right so in dpcm encoder and in pcm encoder only one additional block is there that is prediction filter right now let me explain working of this dpcm encoder see here we have analog signal that we give it to sampler so that will be generating sampled signal that is x of nts here we have prediction filter that will be predicting next sample value and that will be x cap of nts so first of all we will be generating error signal that is e of nts and that error signal e of nts that will be x of nts minus x cap of nts right let us say this is equation number one now you need to understand what is quantizer output see quantizer will be adding quantization error so quantizer output eq of nts that will be input that is e of nts plus quantization error so here quantizer output eq of nts that will be input to quantizer that is e of nts plus qe of nts this qe of nts that is quantization error right now let us say this is equation number two now you need to understand what is input to this prediction filter see input to this prediction filter that is xq of nts right and that is addition of prediction filter output and quantizer output right so here input to prediction filter xq of nts that is eq of nts plus x cap of nts right so let me note it down over here now here what i'll do is i'll use this two equation if you carefully observe here we have eq of nts that is quantizer output so this equation two that i'll substitute over here so what i'll do is i'll substitute eq of nts that is equals to e of nts plus qe of nts right so this is what i have substituted from equation number two now here what i'll do is i'll be using equation number one see in equation number one we have error signal e of nts so this e of nts that is x of nts minus x cap of nts right so let us substitute that over here and if you carefully observe this equation here we have x cap of nts and here we have x cap of nts here we have negative sign so these two terms are getting cancelled so we'll be having input to prediction filter what is that that is x of nts plus 
QE of NTS. What it means? Input to prediction filter. That will be addition of sampled signal and quantization error. Right. Now what I'll do is, I'll be using this equation for DPCM decoder. So now I'll explain you DPCM decoder first. Using DPCM decoder, we can generate analog signal from DPCM signal. So here we have DPCM signal, which we have generated using DPCM encoder over here, right? And this DPCM signal that we give it to decoder. See this decoder that is functioning as per exactly opposite to encoder. Like we have seen encoder over here. This encoder does what? This encoder that will be generating digital data as per error signal, right? So in decoder, what will happen? In decoder, here we will be having DPCM signal and it will be generating exact error signal, right? Which we have seen it with encoder. So this EQ of NTS, that is this signal, that is quantizer output signal, right? Now, if you observe, here we have prediction filter. So this prediction filter, that is same as prediction filter, which we use it with encoder. So output of prediction filter over here, that is X cap of NTS. So over here also prediction filter output, that is X cap of NTS, right? Now what we do is we add these two signals and that is generating XQ of NTS, right? And which we give it to low pass filter and then we will be having analog output. So first of all, you need to understand what is this signal, which is input to low pass filter. See input to low pass filter is XQ of NTS and that is EQ of NTS plus X cap of NTS, right? Now, if you observe EQ of NTS and X cap of NTS, so that we have derived with encoder, right? So in encoder, we have derived these two signals, EQ of NTS, right? So EQ of NTS, that is E of NTS plus QE of NTS. So that I'll substitute over here and X cap of NTS that we have seen with this first equation. So X cap of NTS will be how much? It will be X of NTS minus E of NTS, right? So using equation one and equation two, I'll be modifying this equation. So here from equation one and equation two, see EQ of NTS, that is E of NTS plus QE of NTS and X cap of NTS, that is X of NTS minus E of NTS. Now, if you observe here, see this E of NTS that is getting canceled over here, right? Here we have negative sign. So XQ of NTS, which is what? Input to low pass filter. So that will be QE of NTS plus X of NTS. What is QE of NTS? That is quantization error. And what is X of NTS? That is sampled signal. So here quantization error and sampled signal that is available over here. And if you have sampled signal and if you pass it through low pass filter, then from the envelope of that sampled signal, we will be having analog output over here, right? Now I'll explain you advantages, disadvantages and applications of DPCM. When you talk about DPCM advantages, then one should know with DPCM, we need lower bit rate and here we will be having better compression, right? So when you talk about advantages, then here we will be having reduced bit rate compared to PCM and here we have better compression and you will be observing it is easier to implement compared to adaptive delta PCM. See adaptive delta PCM that I'll explain in my next coming videos in this video lecture series. One should know DPCM implementation that is easier compared to adaptive delta PCM, right? Now let me discuss about disadvantages of DPCM. See here there can be error propagation. The reason is here we are using prediction filter. So if there is some error in prediction output, in that case, there will be error propagation. Like as and when you take difference in between two samples. And if there is error in predicted data, 
then every time in feedback that error is getting propagated for next consecutive two samples right see next disadvantage that is based on complexity that is there due to predictor right now let me discuss about applications see dpcm that is used for compression usually we use it for voice compression we use it for video compression as well as we use it for image compression so if you talk about applications then dpcm is used for audio compression video compression and image compression right so that is how dpcm is there with us now in next videos i'll be explaining examples based on differential pulse code modulation that will resolve your understanding further still if you have any confusion just place that in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video